Once again, uh, good afternoon and welcome to the Jacobs School of Engineering. Um, I'm Kenneth Vecchio, I'm the chair of the Nano Engineering Department, and it's uh, probably the first time you've ever heard that there is such a thing as a Nano Engineering Department. So I'd like to tell you a little bit about the department. It is the uh, newest, uh, the sixth engineering department in Jacobs School, it's the newest one, and it's what we like to refer to as material science for the 21st century. The department itself is um, a mixture of faculty from a, a wide range of science and engineering disciplines. Uh, we are responsible for running the campus-wide chemical engineering program. That, that program currently has about 340 undergraduates in it uh, and about 20 graduate students. And last year, we admitted our first class of freshmen into the new nanoengineering program. So the nanoengineering program is a program that's run entirely within our department, while the chemical engineering program is a cross-campus program, which involves faculty from bioengineering department, mechanical and aerospace engineering, and the department of uh, chemistry and biochemistry. So both programs are highly in interdisciplinary in their nature. Uh, and so the, the faculty that are involved in being able to teach the curriculum of these uh, programs requires a, a group of faculty that are also very broad in their background. So we have faculty with uh, degrees in physics, chemistry, um, bioengineering, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, uh, quite a few in chemical engineering and a couple in material science. And these faculty got together over the last couple of years to uh, create a very innovative new kind of curriculum, the first of its kind in nanoengineering. And in the uh, follow-on session that we'll have after this about the uh, department in more detail, I will go through the curriculum and how it works and the options and choices for you. Um, so for right now, in these couple of minutes, I just want to give you a flavor of what the department is like. So I hope you uh, enjoy our little um, cartoon here. We are a small department, relatively speaking. Uh, we currently have 17 faculty. Uh, those faculty manage as uh, in their research about $30 million of research in the department, so it's a very um, successful department in terms of its research. Uh, we account for about three quarters of all the uh, technology disclosures from the uh, Jacobs School of Engineering, so again, a very um, uh, innovative uh, research activity. We also have uh, started up quite a few companies. Our faculty are responsible for the creation of about 15 different companies over the course of their academic lives. So uh, a lot of the work um, is that we do in our research, we're very eager to translate into uh, technologies for uh, society. Uh, I just want to point out that um, if you really want to know all the details about um, how the curriculum itself is uh, set up, we have a very uh, detailed uh, website uh, for the department um, with pretty much everything that I could possibly tell you about it is uh, given on the website. Um, so after you hear my second talk later on, um, you know, please spend some time looking carefully at the website because the, the curriculum is very different. Um, about half of the uh, courses that the department, that the curriculum involves are new courses that the department has created specifically to address the, uh, the requirements of a, curric of a curriculum that is so interdisciplinary as um, what nanoengineering is. So let me see if I can then tell you a little bit about what uh, nanoengineering is from our perspective. So this is a, a very fun, very uh, involved uh, picture. And in the middle is a size scale bar. Uh, and then on either side, on the left, uh, the, your left side, is uh, things in nature that exist in that size scale and things on the right side that we engineer that exist in that uh, corresponding size scales. So, if you uh, notice on the uh, center bar, there's a color scale there where uh, the, the visible light spectrum uh, lies, and we work from there down. So nanoengineering is about really small stuff. Uh, in nature, it's about things on the scale of, of blood cells and smaller. So you might ask, well, you know, why is that... Um, why does that make it an engineering discipline? Well, what we're interested in doing is being able to make things, 
sort of from the bottom up, the way nature makes things, and build engineering devices that function at that scale. And so in uh, my follow-on talk, I'm gonna show you some actual examples of engineering structures, we'll call them, engineering structures that we built at the nanoscale that function. And we'll try to explain a little bit about what's so unique, unique about being able to function at that scale. Uh, the kinds of uh, um, job opportunities that come out of working in this scale covers pretty much every spectrum of technology uh, that we, that we um, can think about. Um, the little diagram on the left side is, um, illustrates sort of the concept that if you have an, an innovative application, pretty much everybody these days is trying to figure out how to make it better by using nanotechnology. And what, what we see is uh, activities based on the research going on that affect every kind of uh, engineering discipline, from large-scale structures where people are using nanomaterials to create very innovative, uh, high-strength, lightweight materials, to projects using nanomaterials to create unique uh, thermal properties in structures, uh, all the way to uh, medicine where uh, quite a few of our faculty are involved in creating um, nanoscale drug delivery technologies that will allow uh, drugs to go through a person's body right to the site of, uh, for example, of a cancer growth and only release the drug locally at that site, eliminating full body chemotherapy and creating a pathway to localized chemotherapy. Uh, we are also working on technologies, which I'll talk about in the follow-on talk, of how to actually use nanoscale vehicles to deliver the drug to that site. And so I'll show you it. It's for those of you in, in my age group, um, you'll probably remember um, Fantastic Voyage in the 60s. Um, you will be amazed at how close we are actually to that kind of concept. And so uh, I, I hope to entertain you a little bit with that um, in the follow-on talk. Uh, our department, uh, because of the very vast array of, of opportunities for nanotechnology, as a department, we have to pick some areas that we're really going to try to be great in. And so our department has chosen three areas of research, and therefore that research will naturally flow into the curriculum. Three areas of research that we uh, are trying to be really great at. Um, the one uh, area where about a third of our faculty work in is the uh, nanobiotechnology area. Uh, the second one is in so the chemical synthesis approach to bottom-up manufacturing of materials using nanotechnology and nanomaterials. And the third one, which is a, a very rapidly growing activity in the department, which is nanotechnologies for energy and the environment. In the field of energy, nanoscale materials is going to have a transformative effect, and we have quite a few faculty that are uh, actively working in that, in that area, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about their research later on. Uh, so, to really understand what, what nanoengineering is about, you really have to think about uh, the periodic table as a toolbox for you to work with. And now the periodic table in terms of nanoengineering is a three-dimensional structure in which the third dimension going into the plane of the board is material scale where the properties of each material in the periodic table takes on new properties when you make them small. Those properties are often quite different than the properties you have when the materials are in bulk scale, the kind of scale that we handle them at normally in our, da in our daily research or in, in your lives. When they become very small, they have properties that are very unique. And it's really about trying to engineer and innovate with those new properties that makes nanoengineering such an exciting field. It's also very critical because in that length scale, it's where the continuum world of mechanics and the uh, quantum scale world of mechanics have to come together. So it's also a scale of materials where really unusual things often happen. Uh, the very nature of those research activities that we're involved in have a strong underpinning in the material science area. So a, a large amount of what we do focuses in that center yellow uh, circle where we work on, on innovative new technologies for chemical synthesis and the science and engineering that goes behind those. It's part of why the chemical engineering program is so tightly tied to our department because much of what's going to happen in developing ability to make large 
large-scale nanomaterials is going to rely on chemical engineering approaches. We've been putting in more nanoscale materials, technologies, courses into the chemical engineering uh, curriculum. And because the physical scale of the materials that we work with is so small, it's a field which lends itself to significant uh, impact capability from computational technologies. So computational material science and computational nanotechnology becomes an integral part. So we actually have a course in the undergraduate curriculum about how to um, put uh, computational tools together to address nanotechnology innovations. Um, lastly, um, we're very excited about the fact that we're going to actually have a new home. Uh, our newest engineering building is currently under construction. This is what it will look like eventually, and uh, this is what it currently looks like. Uh, let's see if I can do this. There we go. That's a live feed. You can see actually motion. That's the, what the building currently looks like, and it may not seem like much yet, but it will be a spectacular building, and it's only a year and about two months away from being completed. Uh, we actually hope to have this, the concrete structure finished in May, and, uh, and then all of the uh, inner workings. And what's so exciting about it is not only will it house all of our faculty in one location with all of their research labs brought into that new building, but it also will house a very large undergraduate lab for the nanoengineering, uh, what we refer to as capstone design classes. These are engineering courses that we've created for the senior level uh, engineering students to integrate what they've learned about nano and be able to create some devices on that scale. And it will also house a large, about 9,000 square foot core research facility in the basement of that building with uh, a whole host of uh, new uh, instruments that will uh, support both undergraduate and graduate uh, education and research opportunities. So with that, I uh, will invite you all after Bioengineering has a chance to speak to you. Uh, we will have another uh, slightly more in-depth discussion of the nanoengineering department and uh, chemical engineering curriculum and nanoengineering curriculum following this back in uh, Jacobs Hall in the Qualcomm conference room. Thank you.